Now in the long list of dinosaur bear and rock formations, this one's probably the most famous and for good reason. Name a dinosaur. Go ahead, I'll wait. Now it's not an absolute given that you've named a dinosaur from the Hell Creek Formation, but the odds are pretty high. Now we will get into what lived there, but first, what the Hell's Creek is a formation. A geological formation is an entire body of rock that has a specific location and set of characteristics. These characteristics are defining enough that they're a result of a specific environment, recording said environment over hundreds of thousands to millions of years until that environment changes and in doing so changes the kind of rock being laid down. So whenever I mention a formation from now on, now you know. The rock unit that has been named the Hell Creek Formation was named after the creek near the town of Jordan. Hell Creek Stream itself runs through a valley where it connects to the Missouri River and it's on the banks of this stream where the exposures were first studied. Exposures can be found in the USA and stretches over large portions of the Midwest such as both Dakotas, Wyoming, and most famously, Montana. Now it was the badlands of these Wild West states during the 1880s that yielded the many findings of the dinosaur rush of that time, of which you can find out more about here, and findings have continued well into today. Formations here span across the Jurassic and Cretaceous, and these localities have given famous names like Allosaurus, Stegosaurus, Brachiosaurus, and countless more. But all those were Jurassic animals, and the animals of Hell Creek were late Cretaceous. So late, in fact, that at some point the inhabitants would have looked up and seen the asteroid coming. Now, fossils were known for quite a few years from this formation, but its fame didn't really kick off until 1901, when Barnum Brown found a wide variety of fossils, including the very first T-Rex ever found. This was a big enough deal that many flocked to these localities to fill their museums with dinosaurs and the areas got studied so heavily that it eventually was recognised that this particular rock unit represented a particular environment and was officially crowned as a formation during the 1950s. Interest was then renewed during the 1980s when an idea was proposed known as the Alvarez Hypothesis. It was this hypothesis that said that the non-avian dinosaurs were killed by an asteroid impact that hit specifically in the Gulf of Mexico. The reason that Hell Creek was so important here is that it is one of the most detailed formations from the latest Cretaceous that was very near the impact site. So close that a visible layer can be seen and studied clearly, made of clay full of iridium. A mineral that is exceptionally rare on Earth, but very common on asteroids. As well as shock quartz, a type of quartz that has been metamorphosed by an impact shock. Clues in the name. Now what were those inhabitants? Well, you had two species of Triceratops, Pachycephalosaurus, Ankylosaurus, Edmontosaurus, Ornithomimus, Dakotaraptor, and of course Tyrannosaurus rex. There were also some lesser known dinosaurs like Theskylosaurus, Sphaerothalus, Taurosaurus, Achiraraptor, Pectinodon, Leptoceratops, Denvosaurus, Trichuncus, Anzu, and some avian dinosaurs like Avosaurus. Potomornis, and Bradavis. Now the dinosaurs of Hell Creek Formation aren't just special as individual species. The combination and ratios of dinosaurs show an ecology unlike any other seen in the Mesozoic era. Most of the time the megafauna of a Mesozoic Formation, i.e. the dinosaurs, show anywhere between one to three large apex predatory theropods, and then a few medium to small theropods on top of varying sizes of herbivores that are usually comprised mostly of sauropods and slash or ornithopods. Now there was a couple of ornithopods here, namely the massive Edmontosaurus, but there have been no sauropods found from this formation at the time of this video. Which is weird, because those guys got everywhere. Instead we have a complete herbivorous dominance of a group that are normally in low enough numbers for us to question whether they even herded, and that's Ceratopsians. I'll go into this in a bit more detail in my Triceratops video, but in short, Triceratops made up a staggering 40% of dinosaur fauna, which is pretty insane for a single genus. Outside of Dinosauria, you also had Champosaurus, lizards like Abarmadon, Michelle, some less amphibians, small mammals, and whilst patrolling the shoreline, you had Mosasaurs, Plesiosaurs, and sea turtles like the famous Archelon, the biggest turtle to ever exist. 
So yes, there was a shoreline at the time, so let's get more into that. Paleo Hell Creek was a low-lying flatland that ran along the coast of a particular warm shallow sea known as the Western Interior Seaway. This was a large body of water that cut North America completely in half, splitting it into two countries, the Appalachia to the east and Laramidia to the west, and Hell Creek sitting along the inside eastern portion of Laramidia. This seaway served as the endpoint for the many river and streams that ran through this humid region, which would often seasonally flood across many of the flat plains that were here at the time. Flooding was probably the only seasonal occurrence here too, since the subtropical climate similar to Florida here at the time had no cold season and regular rainy spells. This rain and fluvial floodplains also fed the other kind of life here, plants. Low-lying swamps existed here and there, but the majority of the land was covered in conifer, palm tree and cycad forests, with angiosperms being the dominant flora here. These forests are described as what is known as evergreen, which basically means that the plant life here is thriving and green all year round, no matter what the season. Along the bottom of the forest floor, you also had lower growing cycads and mosses. So this biome was showing a littoral cross between modern North American forests and the more subtropical flora that we normally associate with the Mesozoic. It's generally agreed on that this formation lasted around one to two million years, ending with that aforementioned clay layer that marked the end of the Cretaceous 66 million years ago. If you're after a more visual representation of what Paleo Hell Creek was like and have a gaming PC, check out Saurium. Now this video is not sponsored by the game, hell I've not even played it, but I would love to. But I have seen a lot of gameplay from this, and this attention to scientific detail is this game's unique selling point for good reason. It is Hell Creek, from what we know. Now there might be the odd thing that isn't completely accurate due to findings made in the couple of years since it came out, but the makers have worked tirelessly on updates on the game in order to keep up with the latest science. So any inaccuracies likely won't be around for long. So if you're bored of me just wittering on, then search up gameplay from Zorian, because then you'll get a pretty accurate reconstruction. The Hell Creek Formation is another case in paleontology of the most well-known example being nothing like its related examples, which seems to happen a lot. Many of these examples are things that I'll be talking a lot more about now that we're in the Cretaceous segment, so be sure to keep an eye out for those, and I'll catch you guys next time.